Welcome back to the Motorhome Matt podcast. My name's Keith Gooden, and with me, our expert as usual, it's Motorhome Matt Sims. Hello, Keith, and how are you? Fine, thanks, and you? I'm good. Yeah, Excellent. very good. Yeah, nice to be back. Brilliant. We're talking today mainly about travelling safely in your motorhome and how you can get caught out if you don't know the law. But before we uh, do that, let's talk about the big show, the NEC show in Birmingham for motorhomes and caravans. You're going to be there. We're going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. What's going on? Well, there's lots going on. It's going to be huge. It's getting ever closer. It's nice to be back at the show. I have to say, it's been a few years off. And uh, February was brilliant, big success. The October show is bigger still. If you've never been, I encourage you to go. If you're thinking of buying a caravan, campervan or motorhome, then there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of them there on display, brand new for you to look at and go and climb all over uh, and go and explore. So it's a fantastic show. Loads of accessory stands as well. Uh, So lots to see, lots to do. It's a six-day show. Uh, You could easily spend two days going around it and still not see all of it. So if you're thinking of going and you've not yet got tickets, there's something you need to know, isn't there? There is. uh, You can get a discount through this very podcast. Hooray. Uh, (laughs) What you do is you don't contact us. You go onto the ticketing website for the NEC Motorhome and Caravan show. And when it asks you for a code, put EX1 in. That's E for Echo, X for X-Ray, 1. And you will get a discount. You will. And you'll save a few pounds. You will. Hopefully more than a few. But anyway, anything's worth saving in these troubled times. We're going to be there. We're going to be doing the podcasts and uh, also uh, scattered about the show doing interviews. So please come up, say hello. Uh, And we've got some of your comments uh, coming up uh, later on. Now, we have got competition entries for you to win free tickets, not discounted free tickets how do people do that then Matt? so we want your stories your funny stories your disaster stories or just a memorable uh, experience you had in your camper van motorhome or caravan we want you to share them with us so we can share them with the rest of our listeners try and make us laugh <laughs> try and make us cry if you must <laughs> and you can do that by recording them or submitting them via a form on our website at motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash Ask Matt. Now, if you head there, you can press the orange button, record your story and submit it to us. It's really, really simple to do. If you're not sure about doing that or don't like the sound of your own voice, you can submit your story on a form and just press submit and we'll get that on an email. And we hope to include them in a future episode. And the best one, we will decide what best means. We'll win a pair of tickets to the show. Six pairs to give away. Six pairs to give away. So you've got six chances. So your stories, please, about motorhoming, uh, whether it is disasters or heartwarming, whatever it is we want to know. Uh, that address again, Matt, is? motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. So make sure you do it. We might really would much rather hear your voice, if possible. When you're on there, say your name and where you're from as well. Six pairs of tickets to give away. Don't delay. Get on there and do it now. Uh, we'll mention it again before the end of the podcast in case you didn't have a pen and paper and didn't write it all down. Uh, but we want you to take part and come and say hi to us at the big show as well. OK, let's get into the main meat of this podcast today. And well, Eric contacted us. Hi, Matt. My partner and I are looking to buy a motorhome with a rear lounge. There's only two seatbelts in the front, but we want to take our children with us and they're both under 10. Can we fit seatbelts in the back? What are the rules? Love the podcast. So that is Eric contacted us via the website, Matt, and that's what we're talking about today. Travelling safely, specifically children and seatbelts. Eric was one of a number of people with questions about seatbelts and and preparing to travel safely. I mean, obviously, there's before you go off on any trip, there's all the obvious things you should do. So checking your oil, checking your tyres. Tyres are really important. Uh, Tyre pressure, tyre condition, tyre age. It's easy to forget how long the tyre's been fitted. If they're more than seven years old, then it's recommended you change them. And there's a little pill-shaped uh, badge on the side wall of the tyre. It has four numbers on it. Did you know this? I didn't know this at all, no. So, if, for example, it might say 0215, and that means that tyre was made in February 2015. So now you should be replacing that tyre because that would be seven years old. And you can find it. It's about the size of your thumbnail. It's a pill shape with those four numbers in. So tyres go stale, do they? they go, well, they go out of date. Yeah, uh, so it's definitely worth checking them. And on a motorhome, of course, or caravan, they're stood for a long period of time, not being moved, 
uh, and the sun can uh, damage them, cause the sidewall to crack. Uh, if you've clipped a curb in the past, that can cause the tyre over time to bulge. And in the tread pattern, look for cracks as well. That can cause a blowout, which is the type of thing you don't want to happen in a motorhome or a caravan. Even a little bulge on the sidewall of your tyre could mean it blows out on the motorway. And you don't yeah. want that. And, and tyres aren't like the ones you had on your bikes. Uh, there's a lot more metal in them and a lot more uh, technology than you think. So make sure you do inspect them. But I didn't know they could go out of date. I must they admit. do, yeah. Uh, okay then, uh, what about the seatbelts then? Uh, so this is Eric's question. So the rules around seatbelts are actually black and white. Um, the <clears throat> I've always found that some motorhome salesmen make it a bit grey. You know, So you can buy a motorhome that's a six berth, so six of you can sleep in it, and it has two seatbelts, just the front passenger and front driver they have they are they have to be three point seat belts and there are no seat belts in the back because the layout is two side sofas and a big bed at the back so when you say three point seat belt what do you mean so it comes over your shoulder mm -hmm. uh, and goes down to the diagonally to the opposite hip mm -hmm. and then across your waist to the other hip so it's mounted at three points a two point belt is a what we call a lap belt I've got you. And a five-point belt, which some people use for children, uh, sometimes on aeroplanes, yeah. are the ones that go over your shoulders and round your waist and yeah. click in the middle with a big That's what I'd want if I was going on a trip with you <laughs> and you're driving. <laughs> That's advisable. <laughs> uh, like okay. a rally car. Now, the law specifies minimum standards, doesn't it? Everybody says, well, I've done, I've done what it says in the law. Those are minimum standards. You want to keep your family and your friends yeah. safe. So it, it's best to go above and beyond them. Absolutely. And there are, there are very strong rules about fitting seat belts they have to be fitted to the chassis they can't just be screwed to the wooden carcass of the seat uh, so they have to be bonded to the chassis there must be a headrest and they can only be forward or rear facing another factor is how many uh, traveling seats is your motorhome registered to have on the dvla so on your v5 that's blue and red registration document that we often talk about and it will say on there how many traveling seats are in it um, so just randomly adding seat belts is not the option you can't just do that i would recommend you never did that especially a sideways one that is deemed to be very very unsafe you could impact your insurance as well if you add seat belts so you're adding traveling seats and you're going to be adding weight to the motorhome because the weight of the motor the payload that it can carry and we've talked about payload at length but that load that it can carry is based on the number of traveling seats so if you add another passenger you could push the motorhome overweight so it's a bit, you know good idea to be mindful of that and there are some key dates that you need to know uh back in october 1988 how old were you then me oh 17 <laughs> I was six. <laughs> yeah, of course you were. No. <laughs> <laughs> so in October 1988, all front seats had to carry a seatbelt. Uh, and, and, I mean, finding motems that are that old is, you know, possible. Um, you keep finding them and sending them to me. <laughs> it's become an obsession. And then on the 20th of October 2007, the rules around how many people a motem could carry was determined by the number of seatbelts. So if it had four seatbelts it could only carry four people. So you can't tie Granny into the divan at the back uh, and, and, <laughs> and imagine that she's safe. So after October 2007, if you've got four seatbelts, then you can take four passengers and nobody else floating around inside. Exactly, yeah. You mentioned there about uh, the amount of people and, uh, you know, loading. Uh, that's a big part of travelling safe, isn't it, in a motorhome? Yeah, it is. And making sure you're loaded safely, that you know, you're spreading the weight over the axles evenly. You're not overloading an axle. That's really important. Um, you know, things like considering water. Are you carrying a full tank of water? You know, that could be 100 kilos. Um, half a tank of water is obviously half the weight, but it becomes a dynamic load. So you go around a roundabout and it's sloshing it's around. Sloshing around, yeah. It's like having me in the back. And people say, well, side to side. I, I filled up with, with, with fuel and that sl doesn't slosh around. It has baffles. It has little compartments in the fuel tank to stop Does. that happening. Your water tank doesn't. No. There you no. go. And, so, and, and you've advised in past podcasts, why not just fill your water up when you get to where you're going? Exactly. Yeah, why travel with it for? You're going to use your more fuel because you're carrying more weight. So you know, loading safely is really important. You've got a bike rack, making sure that that's safe and secure. If you're putting stuff on the roof, again, making sure that that's tied down safely um, and just make sure it's common sense, you know, uh, and, you know, it, 
seat belts though adding seat belts is a no-no uh, i've seen them added many times sideways and it just nullifies the value of the vehicle potentially um, now interestingly the rules about children and seat belts did you know that a child under three cannot travel if there's no belted seat available you got to leave them at home I didn't know that, no. No, so if you've bought a four-birth motorhome with four seatbelts, you've got three kids and you're two adults, well, pick your, pick your least favourite. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you're buying a motorhome, you need to think about how many seatbelts do I need. If it's older than 2007, then the rules are a little relaxed because, you know, it was before the law about belted seats. And But even then, if you're travelling over 60 mile an hour and you've got someone sat in the back and they're not belted in, you could be full fouling of the, you could full foul the law. Police yep. could stop you. And we'll repeat it again and again and again. No homemade seat belts. You can't do it. You must get experts to fit them. The laws are very strict. And if you're done, you will be done Right, proper. Yeah, £100 a passenger, per f- fine per passenger. And potentially, if it goes to court, £500 fine for the driver. Mm. Condition you've put down here uh, uh, as one of the things for travelling safely in your motorhome. What, the condition of the motorhome itself? Yeah, the general condition. I mean, I mentioned tyres, um, but condition of the windscreen wipers, are all the bulbs working? Um, you know, Again, it's common sense. It's worth just spending a few minutes before you travel just checking everything through because you may not have used it for a few weeks and you don't know what's happened in the time that it's been stood there. Um, and just you know, walk around it, check the condition of panels. Um, you know, Nothing's come loose. That garage doors are locked properly and so on. And preparation. Why is that important when you want to travel uh, safely? Because, you know, people they do a lot of preparation, don't they? You know, you think about where you're going, what you're doing, the fuel, as you say, the water. That's all preparation, isn't it? But what do people forget? Yeah, t- checking levels, engine, engine oil, uh, washer fluid. That's a classic to forget. I'm always forgetting that one. And that's an MOT fail as well yeah, if your washers true. don't work. Yeah, and light bulbs, you know, check that side lights, indicators are all working. Um, modern, newer vehicles will tell you when a light bulb's blown on the dash, uh, which is dead handy. Um, often confuses people because, you know, light comes on, an orange light, what's wrong? And it's a blown indicator bulb. But it's just going around the fog light. You don't know if you're going to be driving and you're going to encounter fog. You know, check it's working. Just spend a few minutes, as I say, just preparing for the trip and you could, you know, save yourself a whole host of problems and a lot of trouble if you if you, you know, just take a few minutes just to check the vehicle around and check everything's operating properly. Now, that sounds like obvious stuff, but a lot of people just say, ha ha, OK, it's Friday, let's, let's, let's just jump in and, uh, and go. But those extra bits of preparation do make all the difference. And of course, if you, know, you haven't checked that you've got enough fuel in there and then you're praying because you're on fumes for the next fuel station <laughs> or, you know, if you have been silly enough to fill up your water tank and you, you, these just, just, just double check. I mean, that's everybody knows it's obvious, but sometimes we don't always take you know enough take the time preparation yeah. for and the obvious there's nothing stuff. wrong there's nothing wrong with filling your water tank before you go no. i mean if you're going you know if you're going to stop somewhere where there's no campsite and no facilities then you're going to need you're water need it anyway, yeah. you know so there's no harm in doing that at all but it's just being mindful that if you filled the water tank you're going to be carrying quite a lot of extra weight and using more fuel uh, yes absolutely um interesting with with children as well if they're if talking about them being three it's a really magic age not only can they not travel if there's no belted seat but they can travel in the back without a seat belt this is on on the gov website yeah so that rule was created so that children could travel in a taxi or hackney carriage van or bus with no seat belt so you can have a small child without a seat belt not on somebody's lap in the back of your motorhome provided they're over three yeah would you no, of course not. No, I mean, they're meant to be in a car seat until they're 12 or 135 centimetres tall. And they should be in a car seat, the appropriate car seat, with a seat belt. And, and you know, if you're travelling with children, please don't travel with them unbelted. You know, I've often seen motorhomes, particularly with the rear lounge layout, like a U-shaped lounge at the back. And I've seen a family of six or seven sat back there with Dad at the wheel and you just think it's so dangerous. You know, please don't do it. It is dangerous. And it's not necessarily a collision that's going to do you in. It's somebody cutting in front of you and you having to avoid them or you hitting the curb. Any number of things could happen in which people can be thrown around inside the cabin and sustain an injury. It's easy to break an arm. Uh, let's just yeah. go b- b- briefly. If, if you go to France, we mention France a lot here. Uh, <laughs> no kids allowed in the front of the car in France. If they're under 10, nope, not allowed in the front. 
I yeah, I didn't know that until I looked into this when we went to France for the first time. And kids love sitting in the front, it's, and will nag you. Yeah, they did. Um, if they're under ten, forward or rearward facing seats. If they're baby, they'll be rear facing. They're not allowed to sit in the front yep. unless there is not a seat belt for them to sit restrained by in the back. So that's the condition. And as I've said before, when it comes to driving on the continent, particularly in France and Spain, uh, they will pull you over and the fines are instant. They will escort you to a, a cash point and take the money away from you. It's not like over here. So uh, and you can't argue with them because they've got guns. <laughs> <laughs> so never argue with a man with a gun. That's what I always say. Uh, or a woman. Uh, OK, then, and finally, payload. Uh, now, no, we, we did our driving lo laws episode, didn't we? And we've done a payload episode separately yeah. so you can get much more detail there. Yeah. Uh, but these things, which I said, should be obvious to you. Just double check them again and again and again. It's just being mindful of what is the payload of the vehicle? What can can you carry in terms of weight and it's understanding what your unladen weight is and what your maximum weight is uh, and the difference between the two is your payload and how much do your shoes and beer and you know fancy hats co uh, cost in weight fancy um, hats yeah <laughs> how many fancy hats do you take over you think <laughs> Fancy shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you got Dad's shirt on again. We hope that's been some help for you for travelling in safely. Uh, you make sure you stow those fancy hats, whatever you do. <laughs> some of them are heavy. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> we'll put a gallery of Matt in his fancy hats up at one of some stage in the future. Uh, so um, what we're going to do uh, now is... Uh, just a couple of questions people have been sending us, actually, yeah. uh, on, the Thank web you. on the website. Thanks very much. Adrian has uh, written to us, and he said, I've just discovered your channel, so I'll be uh, watching and listening more on my journey, I hope, uh, to, motor show, to Motorhome Matt. Can I ask, is there a perfect A-class motorhome for five people with five seat belts that isn't huge and doesn't cost the earth? And here, with the rabbit from the hat... Is Matt Sims. <laughs> Stand by, Adrian. That's a, yeah, here we go. That's a great question. We actually looked for an A-class motorhome years ago that had more than four seatbelts, and I could not find one. I couldn't find one. And it's a, it's a spot-on question. We actually ended up buying an American RV, you know, a big motorhome. had six seatbelts uh, and slept eight, had a quarter bath. <laughs> it was amazing. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story about it. My experience with that motorhome in a minute, which might contribute to me winning tickets to the show. Can I win? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, no. so A-class motorhomes, I guess, they're t traditionally aimed at couples. Uh, they're not necessarily in that realm of a family motorhome. So when it says A-class, what does it mean? Okay, yeah, good point. Sorry. So it looks like a bus. So it's got a great big windscreen. When, when it's built, there is no f original van cab. So the bonnet is taken away and it's delivered with two seats and the steering wheel and the chassis. And then the motorhome manufacturer builds the entire body and a big windscreen on the front. And they can often be referred to as looking like a bus. They're the head turners on any campsite. You know, one, an A-class will roll in and everyone goes, ooh, <laughs> look at them. They're standing there in their fancy hats. Yeah. As she comes by. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they traditionally don't have five seatbelts. Now, you could perhaps retrospectively fit one. Kind of ties in quite nicely, this, doesn't it? Uh, uh, provided you have forward or rearward facing seating capability with a headrest if it's rearward facing it could be a lap belt if it's forward facing it has to be i would suggest a three-point belt so one over your shoulder like you have in the car but payload would be one of the reasons a-class motems don't have a fifth belt because it would just make them too heavy um and and the fact that as i say they are they are geared more toward a market that is two couples uh, or couples on their own um and almost the fact that rear seat belts are you know, just a, an extra, really, um, not even a necessity. And I'd say most A-classes are probably owned by, by couples and not by families. So I think you're in for a challenge, Adrian, to try and find one. I actually, before answering this question, did search hard for an A-class with five seat belts. Couldn't find one. So the answer to your question, Adrian, is no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Uh, Wayne's written to us. Hi, Matt. Uh, I'm new to motorhoming and looking to get a 12-volt mobile router for Wi-Fi. Any suggestions? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the first question I have is what you can do with it. Um, I'm assuming you want to run a laptop. Uh, you can, of course, just use your phone. Um, dongle your phone. So just, you know, uh, what do you call that when you share your Hotspot. tether? Hotspot. Tether it. That's it. Um, there are specific... 
uh, MiFi units that you can buy. Uh, Hawaii, is that how you say that? They make them. Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's companies oh, like... Oh, Huawei. Ha- how do you say it? Huawei. The Chinese company. Yeah, it begins with an H. Not Hawaii. Huawei. Oh, you mean Huawei. The Huawei. Chi- that's chi- them. The chat Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> You say that. What? That. Say what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the fancy hats. Yeah. So those little MiFi it's like units. Shores, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't got a shawl. Shores, you know, shores. A shawl? Shores, you know. With little tassels. Mm, you're supposed to say what shores? What shores? My spine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go home yet? Yeah. So anyway, uh, so, oh, you mean Huawei? Huawei. Mm. Huawei. So they make a great little MiFi unit. I mean, there's lots of them out there, of course. Uh, and uh, they have a SIM card in, like a mobile phone, and they're data only. Um, And you can mount a Wi-Fi aerial on the roof of the motorhome, so it means drilling the motorhome, potentially, and then that's permanently on the motorhome, and the Wi-Fi unit just clips in and you you connect the aerials. There's a company called Motorhome Wi-Fi. They're one of a number of companies that will install this for you or supply you, and then you could get a mobile installer to fit it. And that's a great way of having permanent Wi-Fi connection in your motorhome. The benefit then... And this is why I ask, what do you want to do with it? You could potentially then watch Amazon uh, using Amazon Fire Stick. So you can you can stream TV, you can watch Netflix, BBC, uh, and uh, you can run an Apple TV player as well. So you can watch TV without having an aerial over the internet. You can, Wayne. Okay, I hope that's answered your question. David has written in and says, what van is best to convert into an off-grid camper with a budget of up to £25,000? Well... I'm assuming the 25,000 includes the conversion. Um I mean phew, any van really. Um it yeah any van. I mean off grid if you want all terrain tires you can fit the BF Goodrich ones to to anything. Um I would I would be looking at Fiat Ducatos, Vauxhall Movanos, uh Sprinters um if they're in good enough condition and not too rusty because they're very prone to that. So I would it's all about the condition of the or the the quality of the conversion as well, and what features and functions you want in it. Um, I, I would say go for a van with a great service history, in good condition, um, and in terms of the conversion inside, you can buy conversion kits, of course, that will fit and designed to go in a van, particularly the VW models, so T5, T6, or older than that even, uh, and the Crafter as well. They, they have converters that will build furniture for you that you can just fit straight in. But if you want to do a custom conversion, that potentially could be cheaper because you're making making it yourself. Um, so I would I don't think there's a specific van um, that, that would be favourite for this. Fiat Ducato are favoured by the factory manufacturers, uh, largely because the, the chassis is built in such a way there's lots of space for water tanks, cabling, and so on. That's one of the reasons Fiat, Peugeot, Citroën are so popular. Uh, And cost as well. Another factor is the uh, maxi chassis feature of those makes. So the rear wheels are wider apart than the front, and that aids the stability. So on corners, it's not rocking around so much. Um, And those are some of the reasons that, that those makes are, you know, I think it was 88 point something percent of the moto market last time I looked. Yeah, and they are very, very popular. Um, uh, so, I, you know, I'd consider one of those brands for those reasons. Uh, fantastic. Does £25,000, by the way, is that enough budget for, for doing a conversion like that? I think you're probably going to end up doing a lot of it yourself. Um, uh, and yes, it, it could be. Um, I mean, how much will the van, the basic van cost you? That's going to... Cost you what twelve or fifteen on its own? Yeah, if if it was if it was sort of two thousand ten onwards, I mean vans have just gone up in price, ridiculous. Uh, we source them for we do we have a horse box conversion business here, uh, and it's just getting increasingly hard to find the vans we want with the mileage on at the age they are to to become a donor van to become a horse box. Um, so you're going to have to search. Uh, lease companies aren't selling out of them the way they used to because the new ones aren't available. They're hanging on to them for longer. So that means that supply is short and the prices are up. Um, so it's it's just searching high and low um, and, and finding the right van. As I say, service history is going to be key uh, over body condition. That can be fixed. Service history, you can't fix that. If uh, you are listening or watching this and uh, you want to ask Matt a question, what should they do, Matt? You can get in touch with us at motorhomematt.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. You know what? 
Go on. October, I want to go to a big show. <laughs> A Do big you? motorhome and caravan show at the NEC, preferably. We're going to be there. We're going to be at it. Um, we're giving away six pairs of tickets. We are going to give you uh, another chance to enter. You can record your own um, exploits in your motorhome. It uh, could be something which has gone right, gone wrong, uh, has made you the hero of the neighbourhood. Anything. Any, you know, the first time you went onto a site, what was the silliest thing you did? Such as this, hey, Matt? <laughs> it wasn't the first time. Guess, so what, guess was, what Matt did? It was the first time away in our American motorhome. This thing was old. Um, it's called Phoebe. We loved Phoebe. And we. it was in October. It was torrential rain. The weather was rubbish. I'm not going to say where this happened. And the rear axle was sunk into the mud. And we thought, well, we're not going to get out of here in a hurry. And the the toilet compartment, on a, you know, the chamber for the waste on an American motorhome is a tank. And they're not cassette, which you pull out and carry away and empty down a sewer point. On an American motor, you fix a pipe on it, you push and twist. It's like a bayonet fitting. You run the pipe to the sewer, pull a lever, and it empties away. Now, our toilet was full, and I mean brimmed. <laughs> we had all the kids with us. They didn't want to walk to the toilet. So I thought, well, I know what to do. I just, you know, sneak a bit out into a bucket. What could possibly go wrong? So he's parked, he's on the site, <laughs> he's got a full tank full of... Poum oui. Or as the French call it, eau dure, <laughs> merde. And uh, so was. he goes up, he gets his bucket, gets the end of the pipe, and then what happened? Well, I didn't actually even fit the pipe. I thought there's no need. I just, you know, put no the bucket need. under the exit point and pull <laughs> yeah. the lever. Of course you do. And I thought, you know, it'd just be some brown water, yeah. and I can take that... Mm to the sewer and mm -hmm. that'll be enough for the kids to have a have a wee and then we go home so i pull the lever not realizing that all the heavy stuff goes to the bottom of the tank and the exit point of the waste pipe <laughs> is at the bottom of the tank so i pull the lever and the pressure of all the water above it forced the lever wide open filled the bucket in a nanosecond covered me and it was all i could muster to try and close the lever and stop <laughs> stop the effluent pouring everywhere it was all over the pitch it was all over me oh my goodness it was horrendous so matt sims was a brown <laughs> snowman so that's the sort of story that we're after, or perhaps you've got something a little bit more uplifting and less to do with what comes out of your bottom. <laughs> so how should people get in touch and leave their entry for the competition? I would ask. We did clear it up. We did just yeah, leave I'm it. I'm sure you did. Yeah, just for the listeners. <laughs> how kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get in touch. Go to motehomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. Record your story. If you've got a question for us, you can record that there as well. We love getting them. Hi, everyone. I hope you don't mind me interrupting this episode of the podcast. But I wanted to announce our first winner of a pair of tickets to the Motehome and Caravan Show at the NEC. Donna, congratulations. We loved your story. It really moved us and there's a pair of tickets for you to go to the show. Now, Donna's story, as I say, is very moving and contains the story of her miscarriage. And if you'd rather not listen to it, we understand that if you skip forward 90 seconds, you'll be able to skip over the story and get back into the podcast. Donna's story starts, my caravan holiday saved my life. Well, that got us hooked straight away. She wrote, a few years ago when the kids were smaller, I had a miscarriage at four months into my pregnancy. My dad suggested that instead of coming home, we go away in their touring caravan. A great idea, we thought. We told the kids, packed up, and after a checkup from the doctor who said all was good, we went on our way. An amazing first few days. Tuesday morning, I got up to give the husband a lion after he'd done all the driving. I got the Aquarol water carrier, filled it with fresh water, and dragged it back to the caravan. It was very heavy. 20 minutes later, I collapsed with severe bleeding. My husband rang an ambulance and we went straight to hospital for an emergency operation. It turns out I had septicemia and just 12 hours to live. Pulling that water carrier caused the bleed and literally saved my life. A true story. I recovered a few weeks later. Well, wow. What a truly incredible story. And Donna, we're so happy that you felt able to share it with us. And we don't want to make light of the situation at all. And we understand how distressing a story like this could be for individuals and families. 
It's an important issue that affects many people. And if you're affected by it and need to talk to someone, there's a great charity called the Miscarriage Association who you can find on the internet at www.miscarriageassociation.org.uk. Donna, congratulations and thank you again. And I look forward to seeing you at the show. You can get in touch with us on socials, Facebook, Motorhome Matt. On Instagram, we're motorhomemat.co.uk. And on YouTube, Motorhome Matt. And don't forget, hit the bell and subscribe. And then we can tell you when a new episode is released. And we want to see you at that big show, so get your entries in. And, and by the way, just to remind you, uh, if you go on to the NEC show website, if there's tickets still available and uh, you, you want to book some, then you can get a discount courtesy of this podcast. Put the code EX, Echo X-Ray 1, EX1, into the discount box there that you always see online, and you'll get some money off. Well, Matt, thanks very much for those fantastic stories. We've learned a lot about you today. You can't speak Chinese, and... Don't park next to him on a campsite because you <laughs> never know what you're going to get covered in. Not if I'm in an American RV anyway. No. With the kids. <laughs> so that's the Motorhome Matt podcast for another week. We'll see you again next week.